So back during Christmas, I bought myself a few Christmas gifts. If you saw that uh, that one video showing those, um, but there were a few items that I got that did not come until recently. So I'm basically calling these my New Year art haul. <laughs> So what I decided to do was to get this set of Richardson um, casein paints. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen these before, but I've been hearing about these for a few years um, by um, James Gurney is the person that I um, first heard about these paints. I've never tried them. So I finally broke down and got this basic set from Richardson. I think that's how you call it, Richeson? Richeson. And um, these are the same paints that he uses. If you don't know James Gurney, I highly recommend you check out his YouTube channel. Highly instructive, amazing um, illustrator. He did Dinotopia. He's got a, an amazing, really affordable light called Color and Light, I believe. It's last time I checked, it's super affordable. It's like $16. And he tells all kinds of like wonderful tips and tricks and um, all kinds of interesting art related information that um, you might find interesting if you're if you're just getting started especially I think they're good for anybody but anyway so I, I got these casein paints so kind of interested in seeing how these work out I think that they work well with like watercolor and gouache and so they fit well into that family but I I have no idea We'll have to test these out. And I also got a couple of new colors of watercolor in um, Daniel Smith. I don't know if you remember, but for my trip I had bought some uh, small tubes of Daniel Smith, but I saw somebody else talking about these, these colors. So this is phalo turquoise and this is lavender. So those, when I saw them swatched, um, and I forget who was swatching those, when I saw them, it might have been Sarah Burns, maybe. Sarah Burns Studios. Um, but anyways, I thought that I would get these two extra colors because they looked like something I would really love to have on my palette and to test. So I picked those up. I also got a small set of Derwitt Light Fast, although my box got damage slightly but I've got um, a few other pencils and I just thought I'd buy a small set of these as a, as a comparison just because I was interested interested in them um, and then because I told you that I want to do more exploratory type of work just with different colors and like abstract types of shapes maybe as a foundation for a painting moving forward um because i was using my really expensive gouache i was using my whole buying gouache and when i went back during the holidays and just you know did a a look to see what the package was that i had previously got how much it was it was crazy expensive I don't know why. So anyways, I got these Turner Ac Acryl, which is basically acrylic gouache. Um, I have some other inexpensive acrylic gouaches. I'm not a super fan, but I, I like the fact that this had so many colors that maybe I could play and see what I could get from them. So I got this whole set, which they're smaller tubes, but I thought it was a nice variety and they're really inexpensive. They are shipped all the way from Japan, so they took a bit of time to get here. But um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about that as a possibility. And I even got this this tiny palette here that you might be noticing. Um, and the reason why I got this is a it's a neutral color. And I thought especially really kind of got it for the purpose of YouTube that if I was had a sketchbook, um, this is a, a really thin vertical little palette that I could put colors on that you could be able to see. So that was that was the purpose of that. And see, I've already been testing out some swatches and stuff. 
just so they're really really pretty my watercolors on those and those are my um my M. Graham watercolors and another thing that I got and I'm not sure how I feel about it I got this large pad of Fabriano watercolor it's hot pressed and usually I like hot pressed but this is super hot pressed it is so flat but the paper is very thick so I thought well let me give this a shot I might be going back to something with more texture, but this might be nice for a, for a diversity of things, um, whether it be painting on paper, watercolors, gouache, all sorts of mixed media types of, of playing. But I wanted to get a, a bigger, a bigger pad, and it's pretty thick. Look how thick this guy is. It's a uh, was it fifty sheets? Yeah, fifty sheets. So it's a big boy, but yeah, but then I got something I've kind of been coveting for a while <laughs> and the reason why, so like, I mean, I kept seeing these online, but they finally came and move this out of the way. And when I open the box, I want you to be as like shocked as I am. Like when I opened these, this box, it was like opening a box of candy paint. <laughs> it's so pretty. I don't know if I could do it justice. And normally, so like these are my more favorite colors like even in my house a lot of the primary colors that I use or the just the colors that I use um, is a lot of blues and greens and browns earth tones that sort of thing so I really like this is probably like one of my favorite colors this this kind of like a a sky blue um, so and but then just in looking but in looking at just this set, I um, I have to admit this pink. It I have been drawn. I, it seems like there's seasons in our lives where we're drawn to one color more than we are others. And recently, in the past year, I think, I've been really drawn to pink. And so I'm just trying to turn it to get it to the best light. But that pink... It just sings to me. It does. It just, my eye just goes straight to that pink because it's just stunning. It's so lovely. I mean, all, of, all like I said, it's like a box of paint candy, right? It's so glossy. Look at the shine on that. <laughs> and this gray with the pink is really beautiful too. So these pans, they're, they're large um, pans. This is also a set from Japan, made in Japan. So this is the, um, let me get my piece of paper. So this is the Kiritaki Gansai Tambi um, watercolor set. That's what this set is, um, imported from Japan. And so I've got a little swatch sheet that we can do. So I need to do that. Although part of me hates to disturb this beautiful box of colors. And I think once you, you know, like it looks gorgeous right now, but once you introduce water to it and it goes through a, a period of drying and being wet, it'll probably start cracking. But gosh, it looks really gorgeous. And you can take these out. Like you don't have to keep this set together. You can take these out individually. And it's got on the back what the, um, what each color is called. And it tells you where it goes on the on the box itself if you choose to keep it there. But there are large, large pans. Let's see how deep it is. That's how deep it is. Ooh. So that's how deep it is. Let me see if I can compare it to one of my other pans. So just as a point of comparison, this is one of our normal half pans that most of us are very, very used to using. This is a full pan. 
And then this is the Kiritake pan. So that's how much larger the pan is. And the depth comparable is similar. So that's how deep it is. Now I will say some colors don't seem to be as full. Of course, it just might be my, my perspective, but maybe it's how much the paint comes up on the side. But it's actually a good amount of paint. So I'm actually looking forward to it, but I thought that that would be a good comparison for you to see the, the variations of the pan. So I think it's, you're probably getting, I don't know, maybe, maybe two full pans worth, full pans maybe, of paint in this, in this set. So I'm excited to try it. Gotta love Japanese products, but I will say that if you're interested in getting anything from Japan anytime soon, you might want to go ahead and order it now um, because I'm wondering if some of the prices, like the price of my Holbein gouache, is being affected by the political issues of the supply chains and the boats, the, um, the uh, large boats that carry goods from like China and places um, being attacked in the Suez Canal and uh, whether or not, you know, because they're gonna have to reroute from what I've understood from the news around the uh, Cape of Africa, and it's going to cost things to cost more. So just something for you to think about if you're planning on getting something from, from you know, that area anytime soon, you might just wanna like pay attention to the prices. And um, so I was glad that I, I at least got this, but I, I completely failed in my opportunity to repurchase another set of the large Holbein because it was really unaffordable. And I know, because I think the set, I, I really can't tell you how much it was, but it was a lot more to get the same set. Um, and I, I, this time, and I know I did not pay a ridiculous amount of money for that set last year, but unfortunately I don't remember and I don't have a record of how much that was. But that's pretty much my haul for um, the new year. I don't plan on doing anything else anytime soon. I'm gonna try to um, completely not buy anything for a bit because I clearly bought too much over the holidays with Christmas money and stuff. So, um, so I need to take a break on that and I've certainly got plenty to play with. I've got no excuses. You certainly, and please don't think because I'm sharing my, my goodies that these are anything that you need to get. But if you're interested and um, it's nice for you to be able to see them and what my, what my perspective of, of them are, if these are any of these items or something that you're interested in getting. But um, I, I definitely believe in being on a budget and trying to um, slowly grow your art materials over time. But yeah, it's time for me to take a break. That's for sure. So I went out and I did uh, a few sketches, um, well, just really a couple of sketches and a couple different sketchbooks. And I've done a couple of things here at home recently. Um, so I thought I'd show you that really quickly what I have been up to. So I went out in my car and um, and I worked on this. Now it's not quite done because this is actually a water fountain. And my plan was that I was going to come back and use a little gouache to make it look more like a water fountain. So I haven't done that yet. Um, but that was January 1st. So that was the first thing I did um, beginning of this year. Um, so there's this like little pond and there's a lot of ducks feeling a bit uncomfortable. We are so crowded here. And then um, that same day I went out and I used this larger 
Ranger sketchbook, which I'm still not sure about. I have two. I have a smaller one. I have this one. The pages, uh, it's so smooth, so I'm not really sure how I feel about it yet. But I just used some of my pencils. I think these were just my luminance pencils and maybe some of my Prismacolor pencils. And I just really uh, did something very quick. Um, there was a, a really pretty, I was more comfortable in this spot because this was a, a parking lot. And so I wasn't, I didn't feel quite so vulnerable in this situation. Um, but there was this huge oak tree and I tried to just kind of rough it in. And there were some of the really tall, thin palm trees. So I did that as well, same day. My cheeks are red, I don't know why. Um, I decided to sit in this parking lot and paint this tree. I'll show you the tree. The tree right there. And... So... It doesn't look great, so... What I was doing was, the reason why it does not look like my normal stuff is because this is a ranger sketchbook, so it's not watercolor paper, it's not even mixed media paper, it's just thick paper. And so I was trying my Neo Colors and my Neo Color 2s, Prismacolor, and um, what else did I have? I think that's it for the most part. And it's just pencil. Trying to get that tree. To, um, it was looking really okra-y colored, very ochre color, where um, the sun was shining on it, um, but now the sun's starting to go down. And I don't love it, but I don't hate it. Um, it was definitely experimental. I would like to revisit this probably in watercolor, or a variation of watercolor gouache. And maybe then just use some extra colors mixed media colors on better paper but i did try to play with wetting my neo colors since they're new color twos but it was yeah just an experiment but eh, i had fun it's good good time and so i know a lot of people they struggle with um so this book here let me just tell you right off the bat this is the hoo hoo Mix oh hoo hoo I think it's oh hoo hoo mixed media pad. Um, I know someone was even telling me this time that they were saying that uh, they have a hard time struggling with, you know, knowing what to paint. And so I um, this is just my backyard, believe it or not. Um, and I've actually painted this in oil to a really quick sketch that you may have seen before. Um, my backyard, my subdivision, and there's a tree in the backyard. It's not in my yard, but in a neighbor's yard, but it has, um, a lot of branches, a lot of branches. And when it's leaves, like you can't see through it. It's so full of leaves, but this time of year, you can see, uh, this is the, 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 it points towards the east. So the sun rises. So I have all kinds of variety of of uh, views um, depending on the day and the weather and the season and I just thought you know I'm often captivated or I often like notice it and uh, so I thought well, let me just I actually just took a picture this time of, of this one view and then I just sat down and just randomly played with some Prismacolors I wasn't real committed to making it look like too much of anything it was really just more of a test and then I thought it'd be kind of cool to do this in variations of different times. And then I did a couple, of, well, I did this thumbnail. It's still kind of in a real rough shape. Doesn't look really gorgeous. And then I was thinking I was going to do another one here. So we'll see. I, I thought I might either try to convert this over to some gouache or, you know, just try to pay, play with um, various versions of this concept right from my own backyard. And so I even have like, I have a little post shot box for oil painting and I thought I might even actually set it up and uh, maybe on a weekend or something, um, just go over there and paint that spot. So you never know what you might even see or be inspired by from inside your home or right outside your own window. So 
Think about those things too when you're looking for something to draw and paint. I know this one famous artist who's really well known who um, he lived by, uh, he had a little pond uh, in his backyard um, and he decided to do a whole seasonal study and he would do a painting of that pond year round multiple times through rain, sleet, snow, everything, seasonal changes, weather changes. It was really kind of fascinating to see how many variations one person could get interpreting one particular view. And it's really kind of cool. So anyways, I just wanted to throw that out, out there as fodder for possible things that you might want to try to consider doing when you're looking for stuff to do on your own. And so with that, I guess I will end the video here, guys. And I hope that you enjoyed today's video. It wasn't probably as controversial as maybe my last one was. Um, but regardless, I hope that you gleaned something that was helpful. And I certainly hope that uh, you will have a beautiful and blessed creative week ahead. And I'll see you next week. Alright guys, bye!